Brian, what's up? Hey, Adam. Oh, what's this? Adam, what are you doing? Adam! No! Hey, everyone. Jason here. Um, we've tried to find Someone to do the Kahoot. Uh, you know what, though? We could just try and bring him back. I happen to have this. So, uh, let's see what happens. I've been gone for such a long time. My hair just got like crazy long. How's everyone doing? Oh, okay, good. We got it blocked. Yay. <laughs> How's everyone doing? I've been I've been gone for so long in the time void that uh, my hair just I know it's my favorite intro too that is my absolute favorite intro Jason and I not just me Jason Jason's the one who did the excellent job on that Jason really did such an amazing job on that so you know props to Jason he and I filmed that some of that we actually filmed the day of we we got um, Adam together to do the snap and look I'm already I'm vanishing again you can see it. This, these backgrounds are weird on me. Hopefully you guys aren't seeing like the me vanishing. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Andrew. <laughs> That's cracking me up. Look, do you guys see the, my neck? I'm not totally here yet. I'm still vanishing. We'll wait for everyone to join the Kahoot. But guess what we got back? We got some music. Who's hearing the music? And tell me if the mic's hot or anything. If the mic's... I feel like it's a little high. How does the volume sound? How do I sound? How's the music sound? We got music. Got some punch out. Dude, I don't think we have the computer music though. Yeah, we don't have the Kahoot music. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. Okay. Let me try to fix the. We don't have Kahoot music, right? We need some Kahoot music, don't we? System. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, routing. Why is there no Kahoot music? Oh no. Kahoot, what have you done? Let me see here. Is that music playing, right? So just volume level. Change lobby music. <laughs> Two seconds, we'll get this Kahoot music going. Uh, it's probably a general setting on my computer. Two seconds. How is everyone doing today? Is everyone ready for the change? I should not do this while we're live. Let's do this. Everyone's signing up. We got 26 players in. Change your input. I should not do this while we're live. I want the music though. Uh, troubleshoot. Input devices, microphone. <laughs> it's posted so oh thank you adam thanks for liking the video i appreciate that i'm seeing if i can get this output devices oh it says yeti stereo microphone okay i disabled that we're so close okay i hear that whoa did anyone else hear some chime noises or is it only me who heard chime noises chime noises yes or no Probably no. Okay, good. <laughs> well, why is that not? They made this so complicated. We got some good news. We'll talk about the bonus here. We're going to do some crazy. Choose your output device. Oh, I think we figured it out. Okay. I think we got it. You ready? I think we've done it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Did that do it? Was it really loud? Well, that's like cool music. How loud is it right now on a scale one? Oh, you guys don't hear it, right? Okay, I've got the audio playing now, but you can't hear it. Cool. Okay, two seconds. I know how to do this. I'm not a boomer, I promise. Okay. Okay. 
This is Brian figuring stuff out. Two seconds. Okay. Got that. I think we did it. Do we got the music? I'm like, I'm working with this right now. <laughs> the whole routing of everything. All right, we got this. Let's go. There we go. I can control it. I can switch it. Whoa, what's happened to my eyes? I know. I kind of like it. It's like different music, right, Dennis? Pretty chill. We got this set up. We'll, we might even try some Discord stuff later to see if we can get the Discord working. So, big announcements. Let's start. Does it sound like creepy or who music? <laughs> we can try different stuff. Which one are going to pick? Take some votes. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I win. Oh, I think I've heard this one before. That's classic. Which one? We've all heard that one. We can start here in a moment. Which one are we going to pick? EDM to heavy DM? <laughs> Am I missing it? Halloween? Oh, I've heard this. This is like one of my favorite ones. Reggae to have reggae? Ah! Oh. That's chill. That's chill. Beatbox. Only if I could beatbox. Is there a beatbox? Oh, there is? <laughs> This one is like Oh, this makes my day. Coming on here having some fun, relaxing, just doing some stats for one. That's what we do. We just come on here. We chill with some stats for one. Oh, dude, that just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> reggae? Did we miss the reggae? Did we do the reggae? Oh, we did the reggae. Reggae's good. Reggae's chill. That's me. I'm pulling that. I'm going my mic right there. Reggae's chill. Reggae, like, reggae is something you just have in the background on. Just be like, keep this. Ooh, it's got an organ. And it's, it's got, like, a... Little, like... Staccato with legato. There we go. Yeah, that's the only staccato. <laughs> it's pretty good. I like this. I agree. This is chill. This gets us chill for the game. Is that... It's just... Yeah. I don't have my piano anymore. Should have went over. I should have just played the Kahoot pretty... I can't play it. Um... Code is on. Yes, thank you so much, Adam. Adam, Adam, thousand points. We had a vote. What was the vote? We had a vote in the Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, join up the Discord, especially, especially if you are in uh, 320. Not just saying, trying to say the Discord's not valuable for 474. Three, 600,000. Alex knows right here. 600,000 to the winner. You're just going to obliterate the point system. We'll do 60,000 for second and 6,000 for third. This is the 600,000 game. Stream loves you awake. Stream loves you there. Rip point economy. F for the point economy in the chat. Six points for everyone else. <laughs> Causes inflation. <laughs> uh, let me see if Streamlabs, what Streamlabs doing in the background. Why why you why do you not want to do what you do, Streamlabs? We'll get started here in about two minutes. We're just having fun, relaxing. Getting ready for class. So what we do, I'm actually going to write Kahoot and um, this track circled right there. It wasn't a perfect loop. Um, I'm going to write Kahoot and I'm going to see if we can become like a partner because I want to do way more Kahoots and um, stream up your wake. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is that? Oh, yeah. The random person. Cool. Thank you, Dennis. Um, we do have one person. Uh, error. Error is chill. So... I don't think that's error. If it's error, they can come back. 
if you see error, error is chill. Error comes on here and likes to code. And so that's why we blocked the code. But that is not error. <laughs> he didn't, you know what they say? Oh man, I'm old. It says I am error. If, if you get that, 100,000 points for a person to get that reference. I don't, we're going crazy, whatever. I'm just doing it. One of the biggest things I want to stress, if you can't tell, one of my goals with this class is if you come to the class, and I know I've ruined the point economy, but if you come to this class and if you participate, I want you to get the full extra credit. I want everyone who comes to class, I want everyone who participates to get the full extra credit. And I know I've done crazy things, but I want, yeah, Zelda, me right there, you got it. There we go, Zelda 2 specifically. And you go into the house, the guy says, I am error. So um, it's like, what, you are error. Yep, <laughs> it's classic. So do I, have any, I don't have much Zelda stuff around here right now. I've got a um, key, key thing that says like, it's dangerous to go outside, take this. And it's got, you hang your keys on it. How many points for full extra credit? It's only 10,000. I destroyed the point economy, but I know people have been working so hard. I kind of gave into it. I was like, okay, I want everyone who comes to class and works hard to get the full points. So if you can't tell, I'm just trying to throw out points. So if you've been coming to class, you've been working hard, I want you to have the full amount of bonus I can give you. So a lot of people have it. That's kind of That was kind of the goal in the first place, is to give as many people as many opportunities as I can. And I feel good about that. So if someone doesn't get the full extra credit, does that make sense? Like, I know I totally ruined the point economy, but it's three points overall. So it's really great. And it, it's a good bump to your grade. Now, that means Streamlabs, Streamlabs, what are you doing? Why would Streamlabs not? We're on a public thing, right? I know, right? <laughs> I need to. I need to fix it. I need to. I need to work on it. It's just when people, when there's silence and people are quiet, like this. The start of this this summer term, I was like, I'm gonna make it. Like, I'm gonna keep to this. And then I just, I just every day, I just went a little more crazy. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> um, I've got some ideas. Okay, wait. This is the last thing. We'll start here in two minutes. We are okay with it. <laughs> okay, here's my idea. Um, I'm sorry, Dennis. <laughs> That's awesome, though, man. I'm so proud of that, too. Um, one thing I I just wish we could do more questions where Streamlabs tracks the points. That'd be the easiest thing because I wish we could do the betting. I keep trying to make the betting work, and Streamlabs just like one. I don't know why Streamlabs is not doing its thing now. It's just random when Streamlabs doesn't want to work. It could be having weird problems. Let me click on the loyalty thing, make sure CloudBot's on. Okay, it says CloudBot is now on, which I don't know why it wouldn't be, because I'm running Streamlabs OBS. So it's supposed to be on. Let's start this. One minute till start. One minute till start. So um, if you guys have ideas or suggestions, especially cool, fun stream things, so we'll, we'll hope it's working. If it's not working, I know, Ahmed. I know. I'll miss you guys. Isn't it crazy? Like, we didn't get to see each other, but, like, and join the Discord. Once again, we're going to try to get uh, some some sports players on here. We're going to try to get some, like, if you know anybody who'd want to appear on here, like, I mean, just think about all the fun stuff. Hey, what's up, Ramen? Feel free to, like, play along, say the answers in the chat, or ask stats questions. If you're here to have fun, we're glad to have you. We don't put the code out there, though. So, Crab you know it. Will Crab Rave work? Did you guys hear the Crab Rave or not? Was there a crab rave or was it not a crab rave? <laughs> yes. I lowered the volume. Crab raves and rainbows. It's a secret code, ramen. Ramen is great, though. So we appreciate ramen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So make sure, this is, this is the last, here we'll do 30 seconds, we're about to start really soon. Make sure to go to our class site and, or go to the canvas, go to canvas and get the code. Are people finding it? You can talk in the chat though, you can ask questions though. <laughs> there's like a King of the Hill episode about that. There's, there's a King of the Hill episode where the guy moves in, he keeps showing everyone the ring and he's like, Camera's name. You should watch that King of the Hill episode. It might might ring true. Because it, it might literally be, if they literally had a real player on it, it might be from that. But you got it? Tell, tell us when you're in Kelsey, then we'll start. And yeah, no, I don't know. I just want, like, you're in. Awesome. So my goal, if you guys can't tell this, 
is I've wanted this whole summer to be fun. We have fun. We enjoy our time on here. We learn. That's what we do. Oh, and map of him. Oh, no. Dennis is thrown down right there. We'll see. This is going to be an interesting. Well, who knows what's going to happen this year. You guys ready? Guys and gals ready? It is time for some Kahoot. Let's do this right here. Got to move the thing on the pin right here. It was like a wee. Good that way right there. Okay. A regularized linear regression model that emphasized reductions in bias would emphasize minimizing what? So, Stat Tool 1 should also know this. Because when we do a linear model, which they've done, they should see a keyword on here. If you're in Stat Tool 1, this is probably an easy question. I mean, it's 320, 320, sorry, 320. If you're in 320, you probably know this immediately. Because what is something here that you've heard of many times? Because this is what we do in 320. Let's see how many people get it. There we go. So what we have right here is RMSE. What is RMSE in the chat? Tell me another word for it. So everyone should know what this is called. What is RMSE called? What is RMSE called? Give me some words for it. We did this today too. Root mean square error. It's root mean square error. Nice job right there. It's the root mean square error. It, it is a standard error. It's based on residuals. Like the E of the of the RMSE is a residual, and it's the typical miss the model makes. It's it's the uncertainty in the residuals because it's a standard error. So all these things here, are like this, is a big compound knowledge of what we need. That it's the typical miss the model makes when it makes predictions. That's probably one of the best ways to describe it. Typical miss on a quantitative variable. Anisha, amazing job right there. Anisha, thousand points. I'm gonna just throw a thousand points. Each question, I'm gonna throw a thousand point to one person out there. Remember, six hundred thousand if you win, sixty thousand for second, and six thousand for third. It is just crazy. This is from the Discord right here. So let's just go crazy with this. But um, Anisha is going to get a thousand points for the best answer right here, explaining that the RMSE is the typical miss the model makes. Now, if you notice right here, there's keywords, regularized linear regression. These are the keywords you want to look for in um, your tests, because for 320, they should know this deals with the what what trade off. This deals with the what what trade off since it's regularized or 474. My gosh, need one more sip of Red Bull. 474 should know this deals with the bias variance trade-off. Boom, you know that instantaneously when you see regularized. Regularized means we're going to have like um, an alpha of lambda to balance out the lasso ridge. You might see that on here. And these other words you see on here, like the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient is a measure of impurity, as is impurity. That's because it's a measure of impurity. And entropy is a measure of information lossage leakage, which is also impurity. So you don't want a high genie, you don't want a high entropy, but why do none of these things apply to this? Anisha pointed it out. Why do none of these things imply right here? Yes, you are correct right there, right? Correct. How do I search to find the session? Uh, you should see the code on Canvas. The code's on Canvas. That's for logistic. Jordan's right. Nin's right. That's categorical. That's for logistic. So 320, listen to those words you're hearing right here. The knowledge you get in 320 applies, um, and they can be for tree-based models, um, but more so for the impurity, especially Genie in that. Um, these are measured right here, and they are tree-based models, and they're a measure for, especially Sarah, great job right there. Thousand points, Sarah. They're for categorical tree-based models. So these right here would be tree-based and they'd be categorical. So it's it's like a double wrong. Wow, nice job, Sarah. Well earned thousand points right there. Are you ready? Now there's a mixture of 320, 474, and there's one fun question. If you see the fun question, probably just respond very quickly because there won't be a wrong answer. So get ready to do the next question. Here we go. It's a horrible line. Here we go. <laughs> what is it? Expert Newt? Smiling Cheetah? Let's see. Okay, I'm betting on Elated Lobster. Mm, a lady lobster, you probably, I don't know. Let's see. I need to shrink down right here. A lady lobster. Let's see. You're, I'm putting all my money on a lady lobster. You got this, a lady lobster. Logistic models by definition predict a what? Boom, we should know this. This is like instantaneous. Once you hear logistic, there's a switch right here. And we already were talking about this. <laughs> so when we see logistic... And it says predict. The keyword right here, predict, gives some information, like something you're predicting. Like that should narrow it down. You should narrow it down by this point to either this or this. And then the fact that it's logistic, as long as Brian didn't click the wrong answer, that's always my fear. And you're right, there we go. So when we see predict, the word predict means we're focusing in on the why. So, and pretty good job right here, pretty good job. But we see that we're predicting a Y variable that is categorical. And this means we're gonna predict, oh no, it's all right, Nicholas. Don't worry, I keep fearing I might have a wrong answer as I do this because 
sometimes I click the wrong answer when I put in answers. No. <laughs> and so what would we be doing if we had categorical X's? If we have a categorical X, what we'll be doing first thousand point, only thousand point question for this one. What would we, what would we be doing if we had um, categorical X's? Categorical X's would make what's? What would we have if we have categorical X's? Mm. Kind, Brad's pretty much right. There would be a reference level and it would create what's though. Categorical X's create a reference level and indicators. They create indicators and reference levels. So we would have indicators and reference and a reference level. So there would be indicators and a reference level, single reference and indicators. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Exactly. Brad, thousand points were there. That's exactly it. It would create a single reference level and indicators with maybe an S in like, because it can be one indicator. If there's a two level categorical X, it creates one reference and one indicator. If there's a four level categorical X, it creates one reference and three indicators. So that's what we have right there. Really good review as we go through these topics. Let's see. It was lobster I was betting on. Do I know it or what? See, I tell you, I got the magic. I got the magic touch right here. We got to just for that, we get some Mega Man. Let's get ready with this next question right here. And let's do this. In a support vector machine model, more misclassifications are allowed for training data with a small cost parameter in the tuning grid. True or false? <laughs> more misclassifications are allowed when we have a small cost. So this is how much a misclassification costs you. So we're saying the misclassification will cost this amount. So if it, so let me double check, small cost. <laughs> so when the cost is small, we'll make more of them. Think about this. If a donut only costs 10 cents, you would buy more of them. I know some people are like, what is this? It's 474, don't click those. Um, so think of this. Errors have a small cost. So with that, you will get more misclassifications. Who, th who, who makes sense of this right here? That like, if you're talking about, if you went to buy donuts and they had a small cost, you would make more of them in your model. Does that make sense? Make more donuts. <laughs> but if your errors have a small cost, your model will be able to make more of them. The two readers, yes, Adam right there. Um, which one? Your your cent example? Yeah. Is that the one I used where I was like, the errors cost you 10 cents or they cost you like a million dollars. So if an error costs you a million dollars, you'll like make none of them. So this is literally uh, the same example from the class. And so you need 100 pennies for a dollar, but you only have four quarters. And so, yep, right here. So if that's making sense to everybody right there with like Lauren, great job, Lauren, right there. Lauren, thousand points reminding us of an example. And Adam also, you guys get a thousand right here. Remember, big points at the end right here if you win. Um, but when you think about how the support vector machine works, there's this C parameter, which is not the soft margin misclassifier. Be very careful. I did try to make it as clear as possible that this C is the cost, not the soft margin misclassifier, which is how many things can be on the wrong side of the support vector machine or the boundary, but hyperplane, my gosh, can't remember the words today. Um, but does this make sense to everybody right here? This is a 474 specific question and it relates to tuning parameters we use. And so you should know the C is a tuning parameter in a support vector machine. Very, very big and important here that we know that the C is a tuning parameter in the support factor machine. Everyone with me on that? 474 is how we doing? Feel free to ask questions. Doing pretty well on that. I think we're pretty good. Looks like we're good. Let's see. Elated lo I should have I should have been I should have given the lady lobster the You know what? Brave Boa. You got this, Brave Boa. Brave Boa. You got this. Let's do this, Brave Boa. Let's do this. You got this. Here we go, Brave Boa. It's time for the next question. Best video game of all time. Be quick, be quick, be quick, be quick, be quick, be quick. Look at that cheeseburger. That's a good cheeseburger. There's only one fun question. What do people think? I might have my volume too loud. I've got the computer going so well through right now. Wow, we got like 40 people playing. That's so awesome. Ooh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart winning out. Minecraft. Minecraft was the last one I entered in. Did people pick Mega Man 2 because they know I love it? Because you know I'm all about that Mega Man 2. <laughs> I thought about making Mega Man 2 the only answer. <laughs> and I was like, that would be mean. I was like, people will get mad at me if Mega Man 2 is the only right answer. But I thought about it. <laughs> it's a good call. Oh, Brave Boa. I'm sorry, Brave Boa. 
I'm sorry I let you down. Who who are we betting on now, chat? Who are we betting on now? Who who are we pulling for now? Who are we gonna give some good vibes to and help them out and win this game? Who are we gonna help out win this game? Your call, chat. Smart Wolf. Smart Wolf, we're gonna highlight your name here. We don't want to like misclick it. Smart Wolf, you got this. Good Wolf. Good Wolf. You ready, Wolf? It's all you. We have here a tuning grid. With this tuning grid, how many models will it make? With this tuning grid, how many models will it make? So this is a vector right here. Looks like one, two, three, four elements for C. We have right here a gamma right here, which is also sigma. We have here one, two, three, four. I thought I put in the wrong answer for a moment. So there's four here and there's four here. So wait, is there eight? Is there four? Is there four in each? Or is there 16? Wow, that's pretty good. I wonder if, it makes you wonder how many, I wish we could break it down and see like, I don't think you can do teams, but I really wish we could see like who got it from 474 and who got it from 320. So the way you do this is you look at how many elements there are and you multiply through. So since there's four in each one, you do four times dollar sign, now you do four times four. You do four times four and you'd get 16. Um, for the thousand point question, what kind of model is this? What kind of model are we building right here? Actually, you could be really specific on it. I'll take just the three letter shortcut for it. What kind of model? SVM, yep, support vector machine. Another thousand, what kind of support vector machine? This is a support vector machine because it has the cost and it has the gamma, which is the sigma radio. Nice job, Jordan. We're also going to throw some points at him right there. But, um, and this doesn't have regularization in it right now because the gamma controls the, uh, the parameter on the radial on the E with the lambda. So that controls that part of it. It controls the kind of, um, Gaussian part of it. So the radial Gaussian is this one right here. I, I'm not going to, you just need to know these are tuning parameters. Like you have to know that these, I mean, they're, they're values that we're going through, trying out different ones, making 16 different models, but you know, how'd you get the 16? There are four values here. And there are four values here, four times four is 16. If we had a third tuning parameter, which if we had a soft margin misclassifier, let's say, and there were uh, two values of the soft margin misclassifier. So let's just say soft margin misclassifier has a vector that goes through this right here. And here's the soft margin misclassifier vector. How many models would there be now if we have three tuning parameters and we have this right here? So 320 figure, oh, it did Caroline, a thousand point question. It's, it's 474, Nicole, yep. And I think Caroline already answered it. She's right. You just times 16 by two. So now it's four times four times two. And that's 32. Caroline, thousand points. You're right. Once you know, Caroline, when you know how to do this, how quick is it? Like when you know, if you know it, you're like, okay, boom. We just look at all the combinations that can occur. And it's amazing because it's like how it's just tough. Sometimes it's like, how can I not see this so fast? Exactly. You're just like, oh, there's two times the answer by two. And so... Um, it's just the practice and knowing what this means and viewing it inside of R and it's practice. One thing we heard earlier today, and I love it. Um, a student said in 320, they said this time, like I now, I now get it. Yep. Sarah, does that make sense? Um, because it'd be four times four times two, because there's four values here, there's four values here, and then there's two values in the chat. So what it is, is there's four values of C, four values of gamma two values and we just added it to this we purposely added it to um smc um so <clears throat> you just multiply how many combinations there would be so um does that make a little more sense the four represents four values of c which is the cost four values of gamma and um soft margin misclassifier um we don't tune on that in these but you can um it's just there's many different algorithms and so we won't don't worry i won't put smc on the chat i just kind of threw that on here this is Hint, hint, this is a lot more likely to appear on the test. Hint, 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 hints, hints for 474. Okay, let's see. Who did we bet on, the wolf? Let's bet on the wolf right here. Okay, I'm bad luck today. Who are we going to knock down? <laughs> Ama no, Amazing Bunny, I don't care. I don't. We've had so much switching around. But Amazing Bunny, it's up to you. Let's, let's make some magic. Oh, what? <laughs> I hit the wrong button on your. Got the like, Morse code button. So we got the magic button right there. <laughs> so we got Amazing Bunny right here. Let's do this. Here we go. Next question. 
The complexity of a vanilla logistic regression model is measured by its what? Good question, Sarah. I didn't put it on here. I should have said that. Market basket is not on here. I decided against it. Very sorry. I just... Oof. A lot of... Been learning a lot of test questions. Market basket is not on here. I'll try to put out the word on that. This question is a 474 question. Feel free to ask that at any time if you're like, I do not remember this at all. This is 474. Not on the final. I didn't put it on there. I focused on model building. So sorry if I caused any confusion. People have been studying Market Basket all day. Um, <laughs> no, well, there's an even amount. There will be more 320s, I promise. We've just been lucking out getting the 474s. So number of predictors right here. So when we talk about the complexity of a model, it's the more information it's kind of taking. So the complexity of a model deals with how much information it takes. If the model takes a lot of information, it'll have very low what for a thousand points. If the model takes a lot of low a lot of information, it'll have very low what. If a model takes a lot of information, it'll have very low what. Bias. Sarah right there got the thousand, it'll have very low bias. Um, and that model is likely to be another thousand points. That model is very likely to be what if it has very low bias. It's more dangering of being what because it has low bias, it's more likely to be what. Definitely high variance. I'll take that thousand points, Ishan, right there. And also, what else? It'll, it'll have high overfit, Jordan. Yep. There we go. Jordan thousand right there. Overfit. And th that's all true. Like, it's going to, if it has low bias because we're extracting so much information, it's likely to have high variance and work differently on a different set of data, like had we gotten different data. And then it would be overfit possibly to the data. How do we test to see if our models overfit? How do we test to see if our models overfit? We, we use what? How do we test to see if our models overfit? Let's see if I can trick everyone. Hold out. Kelsey right, 1,000 points. Kelsey's right. Hold out. And how do we estimate or how do we pick our model? How do we pick our model? Are missing on the whole? Yes. All those good things. What, how do we pick our model? Validation, 1,000 points right there. We pick our model based on the validation. The validation picks the model. The training makes the model. The validation picks the model. And the holdout tests the model. So... All that good stuff right there. And it's all based on toss thousand points. It's all based on like lowest RMSE and stuff like that. Let's see. Did we help out the bunny? I am just, it's like bunny was the only one who dropped off the leaderboard. <laughs> bunny, no. Bunny, no. Expert Newt. Well, let's try this. Expert Newt. It's time for <laughs> CP stands for the complexity parameter. The complexity parameter is the extent to which we'll grow the tree. And when, we're, when we do CP, it's how much of a return do we need? I think we talked about this at the very end of class on, I just literally forgot what day it is. I think Tuesday, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday we talked about today. Do we talk about, oh my gosh. I don't know what day it is. Um, not that funny. <laughs> so when the tree is splitting, when you have a tree splitting, um, a, a big question in stats one, and let me, let me pull up a thing right here real quick and I'll kind of explain it visually. A big thing I get asked all the time in Statue 1, it's a really good question, is how do we know when to stop splitting the tree? So how do we know when to stop splitting the tree? Because you could, you know, have your tree here and you split it and you split it here and you split it here. So when we talk about when do we stop splitting the tree, we need to look at something called the complexity parameter. And the complexity parameter is the only thing we will tune these on. So the only thing this gets tuned on is the complexity parameter, which is how much of a return do we need for us to split the tree? So let's see here. Let's do two CPs. CP A of 0 0.000001 or CPB of 0 0.10. Now, this is how much of a return do you need to split the tree? And we talked about this during office hours one time too. Um, but think about with A. This is how much of a return you need and an improvement for you to split the tree. Ah, oh, good to have you, Alex. Ask some stack questions. Um, so this right here is how much of a return do we need? So think about this. If we only need this little of a return, this tiny bit of a return, then what do you think will happen? Will the tree keep splitting? If we only need this little bit of a return, will the tree keep splitting? We're glad to have you, Alex. Feel free to ask some stats question. We're happy to have you at UTK. If you only need this tiny bit of a return, you're going to get a big tree. This is big tree. Big tree. Going off. So that's going to make a big tree. So right here, 
Now let's go and think about this one. This is saying you need a lot more of a return. This is a lot more of a turn. Yep, we're in actual class. <laughs> so with this right here, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a very small tree. So when you do, let's take a look, let's draw it. This one is going to lead to very big trees, which are just gonna be ridiculous. They're gonna go completely crazy. They're gonna go all the way down. Very, 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 very big tree. This one right here is going to be a very small tree. And you might even, you know what you might even get? You might even get the what model. If you put your complexity parameter high enough, you might even get a what. We should do that for him here in a second. We always love it when random people join. You know what's happening right there. Yeah, nah, that's what happens when we do Kahoot in the search, Alex. No, thank you for the advice too, Alex. We realize random people might join, but we've got, yeah, no, we appreciate it. When we put Kahoot in the name, it shows up. So I should be like, fun games. <laughs> um, no one's, oh, there we go. Vidrana said it. Vidrana, you're right. It is the naive model. So this right here is the naive model because it's just predicting the majority level. If you remember how leaves work, they predict the majority level for each leaf or each terminal node. So right here, we would just predict the majority level. And so this would be a very not complex tree and this would be a complex tree. So the complexity parameter kind of works in reverse of what you would think, because when we have a very low complexity parameter, we get big trees and then a very high complexity parameter, we get very small trees. It is, this is 320 and 474. And you ready? See here, right? A Alex, in the chat, you get to answer in the chat, Alex. You're gonna help us out. You ready, Alex? You're gonna help us out in the chat here. You are our, our guest in the chat, Alex, ready? So here we go with the next question. Let's do this. Alex, answer in the chat, Alex. That's who we got. Indicators in linear regression models with no interactions will change the what? Oh my gosh, this is a tough one. Oh no. What will it change? So these are indicators. These are categorical X variables. We should know that immediately. Indicators are categorical X variables. They do not have an interaction. So hopefully I put the right answer on here. An indicator is going to be a constant change to the model. And when I say constant change to the model, it's kind of like if you have a point, you just move it up. So the intercept is a point, and the intercept would just move up. There's the answer right there, it's intercept. When So Alex, good point right there, let's, let's look into this. Here, we're gonna pull up a screener here and we'll talk about it just briefly. So watch this, you ready? Here's what we're talking about mathematically in 320. This relates right to 320. When we talk about, Alex, have you ever heard of y equals mx plus b? In our class, we talk about y hat equals b0 plus b1x. So this is the same thing we've been talking about, but now we're gonna include a categorical variable. And the categorical variable is gonna be like b2, x2. Now here's what we're gonna do. Oh, we're always free to learn. That's what we do here. So watch this, you ready? We're gonna plug in numbers for this right here. If you think about this, if this is just a number like 14, or let's go with 140, this is a number right here. So with this number, what is this gonna do to every prediction we make? This number right here will just be a constant change to the model. Does that make sense right here? <laughs> Exactly. If you're learning, we do coding in this class, Alex. So if you ever want to learn how to code, we're always like doing live stuff here. We're coding, we're doing our studio. So if you ever swing by and you're like, hey, coding, cool stuff. We're just here live teaching how to code and all that good stuff. So we do statistics and all that fun stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Don't, they're fine, I think. As long as they're being nice. Everyone can always, as long as they're being nice in here. So with this right here, does everyone, who sees that this is going to be a constant change to the model? So when you have two models right here, you'll have one model, and then you will have, actually reverse that. This is gonna be one model, and this is gonna be another model. And what is the only difference between the two models? What is the only difference between the two models? The only difference between the two models is the what? The only difference between the two models is the what? What is the only difference right there? 
The Intercept. You are right. The only difference. You guys got it. Let's do this. Awesome stuff right here. It's always interesting we have the Kahoot streams. <laughs> Let's continue on. Who did we... This has been such a shakeup. I feel like there's a huge... The 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 want to win this Kahoot is large. Who wants to win this Kahoot? Who is like, I'm going to win this Kahoot? Who is going to win this Kahoot right now? Anyone in the chat? Anyone going to win this Kahoot? Anybody want to win the Kahoot? Got Jonathan saying yes right there. You're going to win? <laughs> uh, there we go. Watch that. Cool. Let's do this. Let's do the next one right here. <laughs> next one right here. Let's do this. Which of the following is a tuning parameter for forests? Did I spell forests right? I don't know how to spell things. So which of these is a tuning parameter for forests? Now, these are all tuning parameters. But alpha is the mix for which we put in lasso and ridge. Lambda is the regularization penalty. So those are eliminated because alpha and lambda go with uh, GLM net regression. And C is the cost parameter for support vector machine, making M try the number of parameters we try in a forest. So M try right here is the number of parameters we try in a random forest. Random forest takes subsets of two things. What do they take subsets of the predictors and also the what's of our data? A random forest takes subsets of our X's, which are our predictors, and they also take a random subset of what else? Random forest takes subsets of our predictors, which is what M try controls for. And they also take subsets for the thousand point for this question. They also take subsets of what? What else do they take subsets of? What else do they take subsets of? Any ideas in the chat for the thousand points? Who knows? Jordan, that is the perfect answer. Wow, that's worth 2,000 Jordan right there. That is a perfect answer. It's the rows, basically. They take bootstrap training samples of the rows. So they're sampling the data. So they take random data and they take random Xs. So each tree is a random set of data and a random set of Xs, and it kind of creates unique relationships. So this is something we talked about with the bootstrap trees, and they're just forests. So you get each unique tree with this right here. So it's very important. If you can't tell 474, focus in on what do the tuning parameters do? What does the code do? This is the main portion of this test. Uh, Market Basket is not on there. I will try to send an email tonight as a reminder. People are probably studying tonight. And I just got the test all finalized. I was working on it a lot this weekend, and then I got it finalized yesterday. Whew, it is it is busy. So we got this. Here we go. Let's see who's in the lead right now. The leaderboard has finally stabilized. The leaderboard has finally stabilized. So with this right here, we are going to go ahead and see. The naive model is a model with high variance. Is that true or false? The naive model is a model with high variance. Is that true? What does high variance mean? High variance means if we take different data, then we would see different results. So we don't want a model with high variance. We want a model, want a model with a decent amount of variance and decent amount of bias. And the naive model would actually have the absolute lowest variance. The naive model has the absolute lowest variance because the naive model takes as little information as it can, meaning it has, as Sarah and other people are putting it, high bias. What does that mean? The naive model would make a lot of misses. Let's say you walk onto UT's college campus. How old would you guess a student is? I'd say it's about 50, 50. Yeah, Carol, that's a pretty good, there's not, don't focus too much on the program. It's more like, what do you think the programming should be? And people are saying 20, that's a good guess. And so why would you guess 20 though? Why are you guessing, why are people guessing 20? You're actually doing the naive model right now for guessing a quantitative variable. Why are you guessing 20? Because that's the what for a quantitative variable. And that's the naive model. That's the naive model. The na naive model uses the mean of the variable. So with this right here, we would see that the naive model, awesome job, the naive model is going to make the mean of Y prediction. If it's categorical, it would make the prediction of the majority level. So all of this right here. Now, what does it mean for a model to have high variance? 
if this model had high variance, we'd probably see that if we got a different set of data, it would work completely differently. So with different data, the model would work completely differently. You never know. <laughs> so with this right here, we see that the model would not have high variance. This is very, very, very false. Expert Newt is on fire. Amazing job right here, Expert Newt. Amazing job. Let's continue on and see what we got. So if it had high variance, it wouldn't be the naive model. Um, it could. It, it would be unlikely to be the naive model. The naive model is pretty much the lowest variance model possible because it takes the least amount of information. The naive model doesn't even use any X's. Does that make sense right there? The naive model does not use any information. So it since it takes so little information, it doesn't even depend on any X values. It completely just depends on the mean of the Y and that's about the least information we could possibly take. So the naive model takes the least amount of information and thus it would have the lowest variance, like by definition. It could work differently on different data sets, but theoretically should have the lowest. How's that sound right there? Everyone good? Expert Nude is in the lead. I bet we got a 320 question coming up next. Let's find out. Redundant information in the X variables shows up in the what? There might be two right answers to this one. Redundant information in the X variables. There are two right answers. Oh, it's gonna hurt me if this, it's gonna hurt me. If more than six people get it wrong, it's really gonna hurt. There's two right answers, and the two right answers are on the same row as each other. One of them is a measure of it, as in variance inflation factor is a measure of multicollinearity. And, oh no, <laughs> that hurt. That hurts a little bit. The, um, the redundant information is when the x's explain the x's. And what we would do is we'd have the equation the equation for variance inflation, which this test does not focus a lot on equations. It focuses more on questions like that to see if you can identify what we're talking about, because we usually don't sit here and solve these things. Um, this is how variance inflation is found, and technically it's of the ith x. So that's how variance inflation is found, but just in case people are wondering why do we not solve these things out, it's because we don't have to. When we do this right here, we can simply go in and, oh, is that what it is? Is that how to figure out, oh yeah, is that the tolerance? One or is it Anisha? I don't usually call it that. But um, you can go here to VIF. It's lowercase VIF, right? Error VIF not found. Right class. There we go. We didn't have right class. So we can go in here. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it's saying it's capital VIF. See? There we go. And we're getting slightly different because there's a categorical model. So it's giving these, uh, are they GVIFs? Oh, yeah. So if we want, we can change this to weight. And we're no longer doing a categorical now. We don't do, we don't worry about the right there. And let's change this from G. It would actually work if we did that there. Weight, weight handedness, really? Hmm, wait a minute, weight handedness. Well, there we go. And so we have, yeah, the VIFs is insanity right here. That's, that is absolutely crazy. And I guess because it's categorical there. Yeah, there we go. So with this right here, I turn my head. Me, I don't know if anyone's taken it yet. But with this right here, we see that we have extremely high variance inflation factor. The variance inflation factor right here is through the roof. It is completely absurd. And with this right here, why is the variance inflation factor occurring? It's because we see that there's the interaction. So interactions often lead to this right here where there is some sort of high multicollinearity. So with this right here, let's go ahead and take a look. With the next question, well, who will be in the lead? Oh, Expert Nude is still in the lead. Amazing Bunny. Love it. Amazing Bunny. Jumping back to the lead. Let's find out who wins next. Best graphic for checking normality of residuals. Ooh, you need to know this one. What is the best graphic right here? There are actually three right answers. There's only one wrong answer here. I was almost going to put a graphic that had like the wrong answer and I thought everyone's going to select it if I do that. Oftentimes I call this by the code that runs it. I often use the abbreviation for the code that creates this by itself. It's also viewed in the check regression. But the way we check normality of residuals is with a QQ plot for normality. And that's the code. It's a normal quantile plot. It's a normal probability plot. Um, histograms are not, I mean, you, you can, you can, 
but it's not that good of an idea. Um, the QQ platform normality is going to give you a much better view of what's going on here. For those who are trying to remember it here. Yay! Everyone's doing an amazing job today. For those who remember how it works, let's take a look. The QQ plot for normality shows us what's going on right here. And we see our points. And our points might follow the normal curve. This is a normal QQ plot. Or our points might not follow the normal curve. This would be a non-normal curve right here. This would be a non-normal. So we look at the QQ plot, we see if most of the points follow it, and if most of the points follow it, we are good to go. Continuing on, let's do the next one right here. Expert Newt, no! Expert Newt, no! Expert Newt, I'm so sorry. Smiling Cheetah, an amazing bunny, jump into the lead. Craziness, amazing right here. What is going to happen? Find out next. Let's play some punch out right here. You ready? How far away an observed value is away from the observation it is accounted for by its what? <laughs> How far away each one is from its observation? Hint. This is pretty much the actual minus predicted. This is pretty much the actual minus the predicted. So the actual minus predicted, that should clue you in. I've basically given away the answer right here. It's a residual. So people got some big points right there who got it first. But what do these other terms mean? Who in the chat can define for us? Ooh, ooh we need to pause on this one right here. So, <laughs> exactly. So with this right here, what is the most common answer that was wrong was this. Uh, I kind of I get why. How far away an observed value is away from the observation is accounted for by... So this, I do understand why these are similar because the residual right here is the E in RMSE. So both of these relate, relate to residual. So I do understand why this was the actually most answered question. But if, this, if res, RMSE was the answer, what would Brian probably write up here? What would I write as a question? Like who can come up with a question where RMSE would be the answer? What would a question where RMSE is the answer be? What would the RMSE question be if it was written on here? What would the RMSE question be? Something about typical miss. Yeah, the typical miss the model makes when predicting is this. So if it was a related to typical miss, it'd be RMSE. The question would definitely say something about typical miss. What would leverage be about? What would leverage be about 320? What is leverage going to be out? That is, how far something is what? Leverage is best defined as how far points are away. And the question might have a low p-value. <laughs> Brad from this, <laughs> I like it right there, from the mean of x's, Brad is right. Leverage is going to be how far it is away from the mean of the x's. And influence is basically uh, what leverage and deleted student residual add up to. Not that they add up to that, but when you have leverage and deleted studentized residual, you will have influence. So leverage and lead student residual mean a point will mean a point as influence. Who is in the lead? So a thousand points right there. Was it Sarah? A thousand points and Smiling Cheetah, Amazing Bunny. Oof, it's a big race between Smiling Cheetah and Epic Expert Newt. Let's see who wins right here. True or false? In logistic, yes is the level of interest for yes no. True or false? In logistic, yes is the level of interest for true or false. Oh, I'm scared. How will we do? True or falses are scary because it's like, if half the class gets it right, you're like, how many people knew it? <laughs> so let's see what we get right here. True or false. In logistic, the level of interest is last. In logistic, the level of interest is last. So yes comes after no, it's last. So the level of interest is yes, because just alphabetically. Yep, that's all it is, Adam. Great job, Adam. A thousand points, Adam, right there. You got the secret thousand on this one. In logistic, the level of interest is last. It comes last. So it has to be yes, because it's last alphabetical. It's just the way the algorithm works. It picks the one that's last, and that's the level of interest. Excellent, excellent work right here. Let's see. Whoa. No way. Guess what? Kahoot added a button. 
Whoa, they finally did it. There's a lock button down here. This is new. I've never seen this. Game joining is locked. Guess what? You can't see our code anymore. Woohoo. Awesome. Anxiety, don't time out anxiety. That's a buddy, right? Anxiety, your error, right? Don't time out. Anxiety's cool. They're cool. Error's here. Error's cool. Error. Join in. Error. Type your answers in the chat. You ready, Error? Here we go. Next question. Here we go. We're going to see who gets this right. <laughs> We're going to see. We got Smiling Cheetah. We got Expert Newt. Here we go. The standard error of a coefficient is a measure of uncertainty in the estimate of the coefficient. Is that true? The standard error... Oh, we're going to do some... We'll do some randomness right after this. Randomness for anxiety joining. So... Look at this. Knowing the material right here. You can trust error. So let's see right here. The standard error is a measure of uncertainty in the estimate of a coefficient. For a coefficient. That is very, very, very true. Oh, no! Oh, no! No, no! No, we had a little bit of randomness. We had a little bit of randomness. One of these monster cats can come after us again. But the standard error is basically uncertainty. So when you look at standard error here, anytime you hear standard error, standard error is just the measure of the uncertainty. And I should mention, let me show a little bit of code here again. So we'll bring back up the code. Um, if we look at this model right here, hints for 320, here is your uncertainty in your estimate um, <laughs> here is your uncertainty in the estimate of this coefficient. So this is the standard error. How is this T statistic secret 10,000 points? How is the T statistic right here calculated? I didn't put that on the test, but I wish I had. I wish I had blanked out the T values and said, calculate the T value for GPA. Because I think a lot of people, if you, if you look, you can figure it out if you look at them enough. Calculate that value right there. Oh, Dennis, you might be right. Dennis, I think you might be right. Estimate divided by standard error, exactly right. It's just, it's a ratio, it's a standard. The T statistic is a standardized. The T statistic is a standardized. So the estimate, um, it'll be estimate divided by standard error. So it'll be, we can show the calculator right here. Six point, where'd the calculator go? There was the calculator. Why do I use the calculator when we have, well, you can see them bigger. 6.6398 divided by 1.2939. And what? I don't know how to type. 6.6398 divided by 1.2939. And that's it right there. That is the T ratio. Sometimes it's called the T ratio in output. So you might see this as the T ratio, the T value, but it's just the ratio of the estimate divided by the standard error. And you can see it relates to the P value right there. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that if you're looking at um, output with more things in it, let's look at another thing. Let's add handedness to here. Handedness has multiple levels. And so what is this standard error right here? Hints for 320. What is this standard error right here? The finals are open. The take-homes are open until tomorrow night. The finals are due at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Let me put that in the chat so everyone can see. So 2 p.m. Um, respondus, uh, 1159 p.m. take-home. That is for every class. And I, a few people had emailed me and I always do it for everybody. Like I do the, we keep it extended. So yes. How is Streamlabs working against Streamlabs? You better be working. Sorry, it's weird if Streamlabs not working. So with this right here, Streamlabs is back. So with this right here, <laughs> with this right here, this standard error is a difference from what level? Streamlabs, we brought Streamlabs back here. We got it. Error. What is this standard error it's difference from? We have here handedness left. And this standard error... <laughs> I wish, right, Nicholas? M Mila, Mila right there. You are exactly right. Mila says it's the difference from the reference level. And with this being the difference from the reference level, that's our uncertainty and it's different because this estimate is the difference. Who here is predicted... We were predicting the weight of individuals. Who here, this is a good question. Who here, see, I do this as a written question. Who here is predicted to have the highest weights? Left-handed people, right-handed people, or ambidextrous people? Who is predicted to have the highest weight? Left-handed people, right-handed people, or ambidextrous people? 
thousand points Milan. Who else has it? <laughs> ambidextrous. It would be ambidextrous because um, ambid everyone has a lower weight than ambidextrous. This difference right here is the difference from ambidextrous. Left-handed people are predicted to weigh 14 pounds less than ambidextrous. Now, here's a good hint for stat for 320. Check this out. You ready? If I want to look at the significance of this right here, what do I have to run to look at the significance of this right here? How would I look at the significance of handedness? How could I look at the significance of... Boom, Brad knows right there. Drop one. Um, yeah, no, you're doing great, Anxiety. We're always here to help out with the coding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see if handedness was significant. I forgot one thing. Let's do this right here. There we go. F in the chat for forgetting the part of the code. We forgot the F for the F test right here. And handedness is not significant. Handedness is not significant. Um, even though one of its levels was significantly different from the reference level, handedness itself is not statistically uh, significant. And we can put both on the screen so we can see it at the same time. There's the model and there's that. And you can see the one level of handedness is significant. And so we see here, this one level is significant. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. And we see here the other one right here. So handedness itself is not significant, even though one of its levels is significantly different from the reference level. Awesome stuff, everybody. Keep up the great work. Are you ready? Who are we going to pick as the winner? We need help in the chat right here. Um, who are we going to pick as our winner? We'll find out. It is a neck and neck lead or neck and neck between second and third. Let's find out who wins coming up. Cheetah, we're betting on Cheetah. Smiling Cheetah. Ooh, I wonder who that is. Two questions left. When we use, when we use, when would we use the drop one to check the p value? We literally just did this. When would we use drop one to check a p value? When would we use the drop one? There is a technically right answer on here. Do not put this answer. This is technically you can do that. This is technically correct. You're like, well, isn't it correct then? Okay, it's kind of technically, technically correct. So when do we do the drop one? Well, we don't check the naive. The naive is the no knowledge model. We don't, no one cares about the intercept. Sorry, intercept, no one cares about you. It's right here. When we remove two or more things, and just so you can see it again, it's so serendipitous that we were just doing this. Look at what we did right here. The drop one took these two things right here and it dropped out handedness as a variable because the variable we are interested in is handedness, but handedness has how many levels? Trick question. Handedness has how many levels? How many levels does handedness have? Thousand points first person, who knows? Who knows? Three, Mila right there. Nice job. That has, it's Ryan, we'll throw some points to Ryan also. Has three levels. Where is that third level? Where did that third level go? Where's that third level at? I literally remember the last question. I know what the last question is. That's so weird. I don't know how I've, it's the ambidextrous and it's the what though? It's the reference level, exactly. The level we do not see is the reference level. And so handedness ambidextrous exists as a reference level right here. So these people are compared to them. And then when we do the drop one, it drops um, everything out of the model as handedness as a whole. And we see handedness right here. And the last question deals with reference levels. So get ready to figure out what day is the reference level if you know what day is the reference level, you can click on it super quick. Oh, Ishan, you're giving some good hints. Let's see. It's going to be a free-for-all as people try to figure out what day is the reference level. And Ishan's giving some good hints in the chat. Here we go. What day is the reference level? I think which of the following will be the reference level. Get ready. Here we go. Let's see those answers fly down. Which day is the reference level? Up. Oh, that's some pretty quick answers. I think there's like a five second delay because I'm on YouTube. So we got the stream latency. As Ishan said, thousand points Ishan. The reference level is the first alphabetical. Rebecca, <laughs> hint in the chat, Rebecca Black. If I only had that on the soundboard, if only I could be like, like it's Friday, Friday. <laughs> um, so good question right there from, from Sarah. So. Um, the level of interest is only for what type of regression? Sarah, the level of interest is only for what type of regression? Level of interest, or so, which is last, is for what? <laughs> the level of interest being last is for something. It's the alliteration of it, the some logistic. 
Logistic, the level of interest is last. And logistic is when we have a what, what. Logistic is when we have a what, what. Categorical why. Logistic is a categorical why. These reference levels are for when we have a what. Reference levels are and indicators are for categorical something else's. So this is the switch. We have levels of interest in logistic, which is a categorical Y, and categorical X when we have um, indicators and reference levels. So this is for categorical Xs. So when you have an X that has multiple levels, which you can see uh, right here with handedness, handedness creates the indicator variables and the reference levels. And look at where handedness is at in the model. Handedness is in the X part of the model because it's over here on the this side of the equation. Now we could switch this up right here and we could go here and make a GLM and we could predict something like gender. And so now are we predicting gender male or gender female? What are we predicting, gender male or gender female? Will we predict male or female here? Male or female? So level of, well, we would call it the reference level. It, it can be the level of reference, but um, it can be in linear or logistic. It only refers to the, um, oh, be careful, I tricked everybody, unless I've tricked myself. Um, so indicator variables have reference levels and indicator variables are categorical X's. It says nothing to what Y is. So reference levels are for categorical X's and they could be in logistic, which is now we will have a reference level for handedness still in this model. You can take a look. This model still has um, the reference level of people who are ambidextrous. Awesome, good seeing you here. <laughs> Keep doing some CSGO. Well, congrats right there. Um, so with this right here, <laughs> um, with this right here, we see that ambidextrous, <laughs> so with ambidextrous right here, I have no idea. Didn't, yeah, I don't endorse cheating. I definitely don't enjoy, I do not endorse cheating. Don't do that error. I'm going to, don't do that error. Cheating's not good. Don't endorse that. So play the game fair because it kind of ruins the game. I'll say that. I was playing Transformers War for Cybertron one day. And this guy, like, I, like, destroyed him multiple times. And he just kept coming back. And so, I don't know. One thing, the best thing someone can say to you in a video game is when you... I got accused of cheating in video games because I'd go on, like, um, a 20 streak or something like that ridiculous. And people would go on the mic and they'd be like, yeah, it's really awesome. You're cheating. I'm like, I'm not cheating. And they're like, yeah, you just got 25 kills in a row or something. I'd be like... Yeah, because I play this game all the time. Like, look at my hours. And they're like, well, whatever. It's Transformers War for Cybertron. Oh, that game is so good. You use Optimus Prime. You just like get out of the, just roll out. Oh, man. So what is there there? Is that a good game? What, I've never heard that. I have no idea what that means, Jonathan. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's my opinion. I don't, don't cheat. Don't cheat. Do it fair. Do it fair. So with this right here, let's take a look. We've got our model. We're finishing off with some, we're, you know, we've had so much randomness today. Monster Cat, don't take us down. But we've had a lot of randomness. We've had a lot of fun. It's been a good afternoon. Let's finish off. Let's see who won. Let's see if there's any last questions. Some afternoon fun. Who's going to win? We need to turn up the volume on this. Oh, that's a cool. amazing bunny. You're the best amazing bunny. We like that. Ooh, smooth panda. Oh, we know who this is. We know who this is. Smiling Cheetah. Amazing work. Amazing work. Okay, so we have right here 600,000 points. 60,000 points. 6,000 points. And then fourth place gets 600 and fifth place gets 60. Everyone else gets six points. Are any, who won? Yeah, feel free to say who you won. Yeah, the bonus assignment is due tonight. Well, because we need the grader needs to hurry up and not hurry up and grade it. But the grader will need to grade it. Great job. Amazing work. <laughs> so amazing. Oh, did, is it you, Alex? Is it you, Alex? You were smart, Wolf. Congratulations. Is this bonus assignment a replacement grade? It'll it'll be replacement grade. It's replacement grade. So it'll if you have great grades, you're totally fine. You're happy. It's just a replacement grade and um, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. So it'll just be a replacement grade. So if you've already done really well, good stuff. Any other last questions? We had fun, Kahoot for an hour. 
I'm going to contact, I'm going to write Kahoot and ask them, hey, you know, we can do more Kahoot stuff. What would you think during the semester? What if we had a weekly Kahoot? Oh, thank you, Ahmed. So much. You guys swing by here anytime. You know, Tyler's been swinging by lately. Connor's been swinging by. Um, so two drops and the replacement opportunity. Yep. So there's probably gonna be three drops. There's three drops, I think. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is do a weekly Kahoot with um, like tool one and 320. Maybe we could do it across all material. Like we could do like um, like a, a class, like every class I teach could have a Kahoot. And so you you could um, like you could learn all the knowledge and help review from other classes. And, you know, like I could explain the concepts and go through it. And there could be like, who, yeah, who are the tops again? Because I think were they all 474? Congrats if uh, they were all 474. Um, let's see, because I think, who was it? No, wait, Mila, Mila's, I think Mila's was, uh, well, people can say who they are. Um, I think we're doing two drops for activities. There's two activity drops. So activities in both 320 and 474 are pretty easy. Like um, Alex's 320, yeah, amazing job. It was, you were Cheetah? Nice job. Oh, dude. Dude, you crushed it. Amazing job, Alex. That's, yeah. That is, you destroyed it. And I literally just made, yeah, awesome, man. That is so cool. Let's see. I think you got, wait. Ah, I don't even know where things are opening. <laughs> I got so many tabs here. Um, Was it all 320? Whoa. Whoa, 320. Coming strong right here. So, do you guys want to take the 474 test instead? The do I teach? Do you teach 474 the second session of summer or the spring semester? This usually I teach. Um, what I miss, and we'll we'll chill out here for a moment longer. And I'll answer questions. Um, what I miss is I miss teaching 32474 back to back because you can really get a very strong coding and analytical background by taking those two courses back to back, and you'll you'll hear the same concepts in a different light and you'll advance your coding skills. You basically get two months of like intense coding training and model building. And so I've seen people who have gone through 32474 in the summer back to back and it works so well. Um, yeah, I'd say it's a little tougher, Sarah. I'd say it's a little, like I think this time the take home got a little easier and the the respondents got a little bit tougher. Um, Ryan, you're, you're more than welcome, I'll be online so Ryan, you're more than welcome to join in, um, you know, come in, show the points and you can join in the chat. You can answer questions, you know, we'll be online and all this good stuff. So you're always welcome to come online and we'll be doing, I'm going to try to do like weekly cahoots. So I'll probably try to do like Friday cahoots. I mean, do you think people would not want to do like a, we could do like a midday Friday cahoot because you know, like Haslam doesn't have classes on Friday. Some of the activities earlier in the year said something along the lines of, oh, did I not do that? Toss, if you... Is that 474? Make it rain. <laughs> we had one where you got a 7 out of 10. I'll make sure those are in line toss. Please tell me if you think any of the grades are not being calculated properly. Um, yeah, I changed. Yeah, I changed a few yesterday. I'm always trying to make sure it's with two classes right now. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Basically, you know, we teach for like three, four hours a day. And then um, then we do after afternoon office hours. So it's like it's like quick. And so if you see something that's out of line, please tell me immediately and I'll fix it. So be like, hey, Brian, I don't think this is calculated right. Or I think this is this um, because it's I'm sure you guys feel like it's a blur. Like when I was like, wait, was that yesterday or today? And everyone's like, it was today. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what, is, what happened? You got to <laughs> any other last few questions right here. I think the tests are pretty fair. You definitely saw some of the test questions today. Uh, so this Kahoot is a big like help. If you're just going through quizzing yourself, seeing if you know these, um, it's very likely you will see some of these questions on your test. I will curve if grades are if grades need it. I, I the average will be at least a seventy five. So you can always um, you can always think to yourself no matter what. And I, I think the take home will have an average of eighty five. I think the take home will be an eighty five. If I had to guess, I'd say take home's eighty five and the in class is seventy. So I'll probably be curving the in class by like five points. But I'll only I'll curve them if they need it up to a C because you know I've been teaching these classes for years and I understand that the performance is pretty standard across each class. Like, I don't mean that in a good or bad way. It's just like that if I all of a sudden have a very low test, it's because probably the test variation, I don't think it's student variation that's going to cause it. Like I'm the same teacher I've been for a while. And so I think the variation in test grades would come from the test. And so that's why I would raise up a test, but so I would never lower a test. I'd always give the benefit of the doubt to the students that my test just didn't hit the mark. 
Um, yeah, that's it. And so make sure to have your cheat sheet. So Carly's here's some good advice right here. Have your cheat sheet and make sure to, uh, I guess, understand the code. I know that sounds crazy, but know what the code does because if you know, like with support vector machine that we're picking between the radial, um, the linear or the um, polynomial. So those are the three kernels we select. The kernel is how we pick the hyperplane and we pick the extra dimension that we're putting in. Can we highlight stuff on our cheat sheet? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. No market basket analysis, Yishan. I'll try to send a, let me send a reminder. Who's gonna be my reminder person? Cause I'll get off, I'll leave here in just a moment. And um, who's gonna be my reminder person to say, you get a thousand points. You need to remind me though and say, hey, Brian, I got a thousand points and you need to send out that email saying no market basket analysis. I think I do it right now. <laughs> Let me do that. Let me do this. <laughs> Let's just do it right now, right? <laughs> Announcement. Why not do I'm on a computer. Normal market basket on final. Market basket analysis. is not included on the final. The final covers model building of, and it covers model building of um, linear slash logistic up to support vector machine. Market, bis market basket analysis and neural nets are not included. You ever do that where you change something to a plural and you don't change the grammar by accident? Market basket analysis and neural nets are not included on the final. And so the big thing is no market basket analysis. Okay, that is sent out to the class right here. So we sent out that reminder. Um, are there, no, there's not no open responses. I've had problems with those. When you do open responses, um, <laughs> still send me a reminder. <laughs> um, when I do open responses, um, I guess I could, and I could grade them personally, which maybe I start, should start doing that. I should start doing some written responses on the exam. Um, I'll probably start doing them in the future. I didn't do it this time, but it's a lot of times easier when they're auto graded, but you know, I mean, why don't, I don't know. We don't need to do things the easiest way. So I'm, I'm, I'll probably in the future start putting more written responses and actually start going in and grading those. Um, my grader has been excellent this summer term. They've been doing tons and tons of work. And that's why, especially having the bonus assignments due tonight. Um, so that way they can hopefully get them done and then we can have grades done before the weekend. And then, woohoo, we're done. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's over. Any other last questions? Everyone doing well? We're going to see if we get football players or other people to join in. We could get Johnny Knoxville on here. That'd be awesome. He's from Knoxville. I don't know. Someone's, someone's got to know Johnny Knoxville, right? I don't know. You're welcome, Kelsey. <laughs> Let's make a list of people who we could... Say, you're welcome, Alyssa, Allison and Lauren. South Knox, Brad, is he from South Knox? Nate Silver? Wait, you asked him? Alex, did you? Oh. <laughs> Do you know him, Alex? Do you know him? Or what'd you do? Did you like send him a... That'd be really cool if Nate Silver wanted to, you know, appear on here. It's like this shadow is... You're welcome, Emily. You're welcome, Jordan. So goodbye, everybody here. I don't. I send the email to his. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, that's cool, Alex. Yeah, you're always free, you know, like in a professional way, which I'm sure you did, to be like, hey, I'm in this class. And if you ever wanted to come in and say, hey, like, yeah, as long as, you know, and if people wanted to join in, if Nate Silver wanted to like join on and be like, hey, you know, you guys are running statistics, um, would you be intimidated if Nate Silver showed up for a class? He said I was doing things wrong. <laughs> then I'd be like, oh no, Nate Silver. Um, I wrote Hadley Wickham. I wrote Hadley Wickham this summer just to tell him, you know, hey, thanks for what you do, kind of. And he wrote me back a really nice short email. And I showed him what we were doing. Um, so I've now spoken to Hadley Wickham just briefly. But he's, you know, like one of those top tier statistician people. I mean, he's a he's like a fellow at, within statistical societies. He's, he knows his stuff. And, you know, it's just kind of a lot of these people are, are very nice. And, you know, I just don't want to be like, hey, keep doing what you're doing, Hadley. You're a really good guy. And I just like that. I like the positivity we try to share because we're stat nation with that. We're going to say bye to Jason here. One of our classic outros. We've been using it a lot lately, but you know what? Let's see. Jason, Jason, can we keep going? Jason, Jason. We've almost got these new intros ready. We're almost there. This has been going for like 20 hours. This ends now. Yeah.